Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are in another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. <laughs> Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Bill and everybody. Back in Connecticut, back in my office. Here you and are. Boy, Live. it feels good to be home. Live and recorded, yeah, huh? Yeah. It's always good to leave, right? Like, yay, let's go <coughs> on an adventure. Then, like, when can we go home? Yeah, yeah. All right, we are on podcast episode number three fifty-seven, mm-hmm. and the title of this podcast is "The Scariest Story in Creative Real Estate Deals Today." The scariest? The scariest oh, story geez. in creative real estate deals today. It's going to scare us today. Here's the description. In today's talk, we will not only cover the scariest story in creative real estate deals today, but we will show you the source. Well, I got to start over again because I didn't read that correctly. Let me start over again. <laughs> okay, rewound. In today's tale, we will not only cover the scariest story in creative real estate today, but we will show you the source of these events that cause hesitation and fear with a lot of rookies. Mm. Along with moments of inspiration, courage, and triumph. In other words... This episode is not just a feel-good-to-listen-to podcast, but instead is a support system for staying away from bad deals and making mistakes. Mm. It's time you know the truth about making a lot of money in creative real estate and not have hidden secrets anymore. We plan to lift the veil of the unknown and delve into the heart-pounding source that has sent shivers down the spines of investors for years now. You need to start navigating around these stories that make your blood run cold and stare face-to-face at them to misstep the mistakes. The scariest story in creative real estate deals today is not for the faint of heart. It is a podcast for those seeking to change themselves, to push beyond their comfort zones and confront any demons holding back gargantuan creative real estate deals in today's world. Them's fighting words. So, Peter... I have an yes. announcement to make this morning. Do we now? As he drinks his tea from his Google cup. Yeah, my wife gave that to me. Says, I don't need Google. My husband knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, did you have that custom made or can we get more no, of those? <laughs> she, she, bought, she bought it somewhere. I saw one the other day about a mother-in-law said the same thing. Ooh. So here's my announcement, Peter. Yes. Uh, Normally, I would do my housekeeping, which I will do here in a moment. But I will tell you that I have created a new uh, thing on Bill's Planet. Really? So if you remember, uh, I had announced a couple podcasts ago. I think it was either the last one or the one before. I don't remember which one, if it was 256 or 255. Oh, three. 356. I'm sorry, 356 yeah. or 355. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had announced that um, I had been struggling with teaching rookies how to buy real estate. Mm. And I kind of wanted to go to the next level. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the advent of that, I created, and I didn't create, I was a huge impetus of creating Creative REI Reply, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which will replace the lower portion of my training in other words uh for rookies to get started because it is absolutely it's where a rookie needs to be it's push button we do a lot of the work for you it's completely automated right so um 
I'm kind of like trying to step my game up, right? Because I want to help people. Uh, uh, I, I want to help people do gargantuan deals. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just help someone make five grand a- anymore because uh, it, it's not it's not a a bad thing. It's just mm-hmm. that I have figured out how to do that in Creative REI Replay. That that system will do that. It, it, I am there. I run it. I'm in the background. You get a 100% of me. Uh, but I want to change my aspect. With that said, one of the things that um, I was I was uh, worried about or I have been uh, uh, dwelling on is how do I stop answering questions? Mm. Because I spend a lot of time answering questions. And after a while, it gets monotonous because it's the same questions over and over again. Yep. So I created an artificial intelligence with my data on answering questions. I saw that one coming. Oh, boy. So I have a <laughs> website, which is in the it's in the description of this podcast. It's mm-hmm. called creativerealestateanswers.com. Mm-hmm. Or you can go to creativerealestateanswers.ai. I have two URLs. Yeah. And it brings you to a website that you can ask, ask me any creative real estate question you so desire. And I will answer it with my materials. <laughs> I've been working on this for quite a while. And I, I, I'm releasing the first, uh, today, I'm releasing an episode, uh, podcast episode 357. I'm releasing the first uh, version of it. So uh, it even has objections. A part of this is is that I, th- I think it'll probably end up in Creative REI Replay, but I'm not sure. I haven't told the guys over there that I'm doing it. But part of it is is I wanted to make sure that I had objection handlings mm, yeah. for people that are on the phone, that they could have this screen open and they could pretty much ask, the, ask me or ask my AI uh, w- what question the seller's answering. And if they don't know how to answer it, they'll be able to type the question into this into this website. It's just a screen. It's like Google. It just has all it has on there is just one bar and you just type in what you want to, the question you ask. Yeah. And it gives you an answer. So that's my housekeeping today. Of course, uh, I'm not I'm not going to ramble on much more about it. The link is in the description. Um also if you so desire you should uh um um Subscribe to the subscribe to us wherever you're listening to us or watching us, and please leave us a review. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm not going to dwell on that much more. Just go grab the link. You'll love it. So I have a question, just personally between you and I, folks. Give Pete one second. So Bill, if I can't reach you on the phone and I have a question, I go to your website and ask your robot version, and you'll tell me what I need to know. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Good. Okay. If I can't reach you, I'll so, talk to your robot. So just, just, just. Just to be clear, this is not ChatGPT. This is yeah. my own. I uploaded my own materials. I uploaded my own stuff. I've worked on. I've been gathering materials. I have a lot of content, mm. right? Because we, I record everything I do. So I went through and I honed through, and I realized how much content I have, <laughs> which is overwhelming, yeah. <clears throat> and stuff that we used to do that we don't do anymore. It was pretty incredible, and I will be adding to it. Uh, but the point is, is that um, it's 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 the next level, right? So you want to do an interesting drill. This is this is not today's podcast, but if you want to do an interesting drill, um, you should ask yourself this question over and over again because I've been doing it for days. Mm. Who do you want to help, or who do you want to impress? Who are you trying to impress? By doing something good, hmm. it's an interesting thing. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna probably go over it in the coaching call in a minute. Anyways, okay. After looking at a lot of here we go. After looking at a lot of uh, data from my past during my recent six week sabbatical, because uh, that has taught me a tremendous amount too. Um, I've been I've been in my own mind doing some strange research. You know me, just to kind of keep myself busy um and wondering how do you get out of your cocoon Mm. how do you see things outside of your world because i mean i'm 59 years old so i have 59 years of doing doing a bill's way right yeah so what if bill's way 
isn't the right way and Bill doesn't know it. How sure. do you get outside of that and see it from a different angle? Right. So I've been kind of like doing that, right? And I noticed a common denominator for my gargantuan deals and a common denominator for my worst deals ever. Oh. But before I reveal uh, what's really on my mind about this, I wanted to take uh, take you through the experience like I did it, like as if you were living with me mm-hmm. <clears throat> in my own head. Right? This is scary. Scary, scary, scary. Oh, hell yeah. So, so do it quickly. <laughs> do it fast, Bill. Get us through this. Yeah, rip the Band-Aid off. <laughs> exactly. I was trying to think of the... Yeah. Kill me quick. Okay. So first, first I was <clears throat> thinking about a conversation I was having with Jessie. She's my oldest daughter. And the bearer of my joyous portion of my life, Maxwell, my grandson, and Molly, my granddaughter, Spent the whole day with him on Monday, Memorial Day. I picked him up at 9 o'clock in the morning. We went and had breakfast. We went to Walmart to get live worms, and we went fishing. As he get calls out of it, here. We, he calls it, Grandpa, I love being in nature. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> we, were, we went way down the other side of the lake. We walked all through the woods and everything. He had a great time. Wow. And then we, came, then we had to go to the grocery store. And to get stuff for a picnic, and they came back, and his mom and dad and my all, all the other ones came and joined us, and he had a great time. Anyways, uh, so I was talking to Jesse, my daughter, and it's kind of spooky. There's two things that happen to me in life that is kind of spooky. One is when my kids give me back my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not yeah. even it's not even that they're giving the advice to me it's like well it's like what you say dad right yeah. <laughs> and they're like living it they're like it works like you know they're, they're having this revel this re- realization like that really worked right and the other is like uh this just recently happened to me uh we we have over a hundred and something uh testimonials in creative aria replay and we did a, a launch, and we uh, we did a, a artificial intelligence because our we have a robot that answers people's texts and makes appointments for you inside the system. And when we did that launch, we gathered in about five days' time thirty eight testimonials. Mm, nice. And I went through and watched every one of them, <clears throat> and it's spooky because these people are talking like me. <laughs> yeah, they're using, using my language. Words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So this is one of those times, right? And here, and here is the saying, right? And please do not take this lightly. This is, this is a staple for me in my thinking, right? Frustration is a function of expectation. Mm-hmm. So that, that definitely means that if you're frustrated, you should take a look at what you were expecting, and adjust that so you're not being frustrated. Mm-hmm. It puts you at total cost, right? So this got me thinking about expectation. Sure. Right? Which simply means, expectation means a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Yep. Right? So it's not what what is going to happen. It's what you're expecting. It's what you believe is going to happen. I'm going to do three deals a month. And you've never yep. done one deal. Right? Yep. Now let's go a little further on this. So does that make sense? So I'm thinking about expectation. That's kind of like opened up this, this can of worms, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought, what you believe, right? So it says, a strong belief that something will happen or be in the case of the future. And I thought, what you believe. Yeah. So this could just be some, some be something, uh, let me see here. Uh, this could be something you want so bad that you just made it up. <laughs> yep. Right? No reality whatsoever to it, right? It's just what you want. Right? Mm -hmm. So who do you want? Like I started off with, who do you want to please? 
Who do you want to make happy? Mm. Who do you want to impress? You or someone else? For the sake of being a pervert, I'll say it's an innie or an outie. <laughs> an innie or an outie. So if you want to impress yourself, you're an innie. If you're, if you're yeah. trying to impress somebody else, you're an outie, right? That's, I was just thinking belly buttons. That's not bad. <laughs> this is not practical, right? So who are you trying to impress? Hmm. Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. We all consistently have a story running in our head. Mm. That is the scariest story on planet Earth. It is the scariest story in creative real estate. Is that story you're running in your own head. <laughs> and this story is the narration of your exact expectations. So expectations, I think, are more emotional than logical. And now you've made up a story to align with those expectations. Well, it's like a fiction novel, huh? Could be. Most of the time it is. Huh? Or it's, it's your way of dealing with a uncon an unconfrontable situation. And you make this story up. For hope. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to pay my taxes by the end of the month or I'm going to lose my house. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll go do a real estate deal and make 10 grand. That'll pay for it. Uh-huh. Many times we suffer from our expectations and real and 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 reality don't match. Mm. So technically emotional stress what the hell just happened here? Hang on a second. I just pushed something. Looks okay from here. We're still on. Yeah, I, I just pushed something. I hit I hit my mouse with my hand, so um <clears throat> anyway sorry uh oh there we go um so technically you could say right mm -hmm. that your expectations not matching reality is a definition of stress or pain Right, you know, because wanting something and not getting it is painful. Uh, not wanting something and getting it, the opposite, is also painful. So let's, let's talk about that. So let's talk about the painful part, right? So hmm. um, you stub your toe. Yeah. Your expectation was off because you thought the table was two inches further the other direction. Yep, she hit the nightstand a couple of days ago. She's not limping anymore, but... That uh, stand was right there. Yeah, yeah. So your observation and expectations were off. Yep. It drive pain. Mm -hmm. It derived pain. Right? So that means that if you're suffering from stress or from pain, that means your expectations in reality don't match. Okay. You're seeing it for the way it is, right? So this is like uh, this is like rookies telling me that they're going to do two or three deals a month before doing their first deal. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I well, like the ones where oh, I'm going to do a bunch of renovations. Okay, good. Right. Uh, do you have any money for uh, down payments or renovation and paying contractors? No. Do you know any contractors? No. Do you have any leads? No. Okay. Right. What do you got? You know, so that an expectation with no reality and nothing set up, just a, a whimsical thought in a sense. Or you could pull a bill and you could do like I did, like I said last week on the, on the podcast, on podcast number 357, because I had done a webinar the night before. And I had some guy asking me, how do I do two or three deals a month or two or three deals a day? Mm. Right. 
And and so my first question is, is when you say you want to do two or three deals a month, my first question is, how many offers have you made in the last seven days? Yeah. So see the expectation and reality don't meet, right? You want you want to do one deal. How many offers did you make? Mm-hmm. You want to do two deals. How many offers did you make? Yep. You want to do three deals. How many? They're connected. They are directly, absolutely connected. Yep. <clears throat> right. All right. So now let's. Uh, oh, another example is is I have people that will tell me that they're going to pay for my coaching program with their first deal. Okay. And I've been <laughs> I, I've been coaching, I've been coaching for, I don't know how long now. Let's say ten years. I think it's more like fifteen years. Uh-huh. But I've been coaching, we'll say, for 10 years. I've had lots of students. I've helped, I've helped hundreds of them do a deal. And I've never once had somebody come back to me and said, I made a deal, so I had that money now. Not one. No, well, it, it, it doesn't make any sense either way. For, in the first place, you need to know what you're doing to make the deal. And if you're not making a deal, you need to get the data and get some help. No, you, right? you could do a deal by accident. We've had people on to listen to our podcast do deals and, and, we, and make $5,000. Yeah. And We've that had is some possible. sharp guys, very yeah. sharp guys. Like there's people like the Beatles. They never took lessons. Right. But look how hard you have to work to get there or be lucky or something. It doesn't happen like magic. Most of us can't do that. You know, right. So, But then on the other hand, if a guy doesn't make a deal, why is he going to come give you money? Because he's doing it. So one 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 way the unless he wants to make those gargantuan yeah, so, deals. So that yeah that that's that's why I want to move up in the ladder. I want to start dealing yeah. with guys that, that that have gone through some of the basics, and have done some deals, yeah. and want to want to increase. Mm-hmm. Right. It it would be me. It would be be me teaching out loud. Yeah. Because. I want to do more deals. So what better way to do more deals than to have to t- teach somebody else how to do more deals? Yeah. Right? It's exactly what Kiyosaki wrote in his first book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. If you if you want if you want if you have money troubles, go find someone else that has money troubles and help them. Oh, he said that. Yeah. And, I've heard and, you say it. it came from him, huh? Cool. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's get back to the podcast. So the story in your head is just a story, right? Um, does that make sense? Well, sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm hesitating. I'm trying to read my notes while I'm writing here because I keep jumping ahead. And yeah. <laughs> ad hocking well, instead of following well, my own notes. <laughs> you're giving us two sides of a of an equation: the expectation and the reality. So obviously, you can shift one or the other. And I'm sure you're going to say more about that, so I'm not going to say much. But if you have two parts of a sequence or a story, you can change your expectation or you can damn well push the reality and make it happen. But let me see how you're going to put it. I'm sure you're headed towards something there. So the story in your head is, it's just a story. It doesn't actually mean anything. Mm. Especially if you have attached it to your identity to make the world a safe place for you. I'm going to pick on you. I'm an educator. I'm an educator. Yeah. Right? Me, I say, uh, I'm a real estate guy. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it's like, uh, it's the story you're telling yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Do people really care that you're an educator? Only if they're looking for an education. Do people really only, do people really care that I teach real estate? Only if they want to learn real estate. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. It it's an illusion. Right? We we all have stories we tell ourselves. And when those stories feel threatened, often by reality, we feel lost, pain, fear, shame, guilt, or anger. Hmm. When the stories feel threatened, often by reality, we feel lost. Pain, fear, shame, guilt, or anger. Now, Peter. Yep. I, I don't want to dwell on this because honestly, I could turn this into an entire podcast. But our world, and it's more prominent to me because I see it in my son in law, and now I see it in my grandson. 
Really? I'm fishing with him on Saturday, and he tells me we're in nature, and he goes on to tell me about some cartoon character that tells him about nature. Mm. <laughs> See, we have superheroes. We all have superheroes. We grew up with superheroes. Batman, right? Superman, mm. Spider-Man. I mean, I'm picking the obvious ones. There are many more. My my son-in-laws talk about things that I never even heard of oh. in that world. Yep. And the Marvel world. Yeah, they they understand all of them, you know? All those different... I don't, I don't understand all. I don't watch them. It, but Bill, my sons do that too. And, but they talk about it as if it's reality, don't they? Right, right. So, mm. here's my point. Think of this. Because I studied uh, Lee. What is his first name? Uh, where's the book? Uh, Lee? Yeah, the guy that uh, writes the comics. Stan, Stan Lee. Stan Lee, Stan Lee, yeah. Stan Lee. Stan Lee. I read the most amazing book. I think I paid $100 for the book. And it was the most astonishing book I ever read about how he writes comic strips. Mm-hmm. And how, how he does it and the theory behind it. It was amazing, right? Yeah. Here's one of the biggest takeaways I got from that book, which there were many, by the way. Mm-hmm. He said that superheroes are parked at effect and the villains are at cause all the time. Wow, that's so funny. So think about it. The government is really bad. They're the villains. Mm-hmm. Right Right now, everybody, you know, not when I say everybody, a lot of people I know like, oh, Biden, you know, he's, you know, he's bad. And we're the effect of it. We have to pay more taxes. We have to pay inflation. The gas is going up, right? Mm-hmm. All that stuff, right? Yep. <clears throat> so in a Batman movie, uh, the Joker is going to blow up Gotham. He's at cause. Yeah, well, this, every, all the superheroes are waiting for something to happen. They never go on purpose, like, hey, let's go see if there's any bad guys and go get them. They're just waiting for something to happen, and they're responding to, so that makes them the effect. It's, you're right, it's funny. They're just sitting so, there waiting so and fighting that. So what story are you telling yourself that is like that? Mm. Are you trying to survive? Or are you being pro-survival and trying to get ahead of it? Are you reacting or proacting? Yeah. That story you're telling yourself, is it... I need to make money. I need to make $5,000 a month, so I got to do this. That's the, that's the evil at cause and you being at fact. So how are you telling that story in your head? And that story that you're telling yourself in your head is, I got to survive. I got to survive. I got to, oh my God, I got to put in my time. I got to put in my time. I got to put in my time. I got to go to work. I got to do this. I got, it's all must-haves mm. and must-dos. I must do this because I must have that. They're circuits. They're automated, below your awareness, circuits. They're circuits that are just running that you set up originally and forgot about. Because of one, one month you were low on your bills and it was uncomfortable to you. So you set up this circuit and now you use that as your stable datum. And that story just continuously runs and runs and runs and runs and runs below your awareness, controlling you as if you were hypnotized. Guys on stage, right? You're sitting in the auditorium and the hypnotist puts somebody from the audience, some guy, and he hypnotizes him, and he says, when I blink my left eye, you're going to touch your tie. Yep. Snap, he wakes him up. And he winks his left eye, and the guy touches his tie, and the audience laughs. Mm-hmm. How is that different than your life and what I'm talking about right now? <laughs> the story you tell yourself is scary. Yeah, but Bill... We don't even know we're telling ourselves the story. There you go. It's below, <laughs> below your awareness. 
like uh, like on automatic. So the hey, interesting. Hey, hey Bill, and we think that's the reality. Yeah, yeah, you think that's real? Because yeah, we, well, your your opinion is correct. You must be right. You always have to be right. You're always going to tell yourself you're right. You're not going to tell yourself you're wrong. Who wants to yeah. be wrong? Yeah. <laughs> so the interesting thing about these stories is you author them yourself. And they are not physical events. Hmm. You yeah. author them yourself and they're not physical events. Which means often the exterior world does not have to dictate to your reality. You're in your own head. Mm -hmm. You're sitting in your chair and your room and your head and you're just like watching the film, watching the movie. Sitting in your recliner and you got your big old glass of whatever you're drinking. and In my case, a cigar, I wish. <laughs> I have to go to the cigar shop to do that. And you're chilled out with your feet up. Telling yourself what you want to hear. Real or imagined. Mm -hmm. When we do this, we don't have to be the byproduct of the world around us. We could ignore that. Or pretend like it doesn't exist. As long as we stay in our room, right. don't go out the door. <laughs> or you can do what I'm talking about, what I'm going to talk about in a couple minutes, and you can imagine what you want and make the world a byproduct of our thoughts. But first you have to recognize, like an alcoholic saying, I am an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize I am a picture making machine and I'm telling myself stories every single day and I could actually blow those pictures up or make them pictures melt and I don't have to use them just because I made them. Mm -hmm. They could be a lie or not be the truth and you could destroy those pictures. You have the ability to control those thoughts. Get out of here. Get, 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 get away from me. Yep. You know, you think, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to have a bad day. Get, no, 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 get out of here. Get, get, get. Or, 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 or blow it up with some gun or, you know, so whatever you want to do. Get rid of, destroy that picture. Here's another little fact. A little, a little known fact. But we don't talk about it or think about it enough. And boy, I got to tell you, I, my face has been smushed in this since I've been on my sabbatical. And you know the reason why. Mm -hmm. Your future does not have to be like, I'm sorry, your, your future does not have to be like your past. Your future does not have to be like your past. Just because you fell off a bicycle when you were five doesn't mean you should hate bicycles. You should find out why you fell off the bicycle and get cause over it. This is like yeah. the cartoon characters we were talking about. That's evil and it's running you. You're the hero trying to catch up to that thought. You're the effect of it. It's kind of funny to me. As kids... We don't know. Right? In, I mean, in general, we just kind of don't know when, yet. When you're a baby, you don't know, right? Mm hmm. I mean, you have, to put, you have to wear a diaper and you have to wait for somebody to feed you and you have to wait for somebody to put you in bed. You can't even walk. Yeah. It's like being an, an, an invalid as an adult. Right. Right? <clears throat> But as children, we're so uh, ready to explore and learn and figure things out so that when you're walking and you trip and fall and you scrape your knee, you, you cry a little bit and then you get back up and you keep walking. Mm -hmm. Right? Or 
whatever, you're trying to ride a bike and you fall off the bike and you get hurt, you get back on the bike. You fall out of the treehouse and you crawl, crawl right back up and do it again. Yeah. Right? Well, you know you're a kid and you know it's going to happen because you haven't learned yet. So you keep going. I see it as an, as an educator, quote, there I am again. I see that in people younger or older, like, well, I'm too old to learn. Says who? A kid goes, I'm too young. I got to learn. I don't know anything otherwise. That's so a better what's attitude. the difference between being a child and being an adult? And I and it took me a while to figure this one out. What do you think? Well, I I derived from it on uh, frustration is a function of expectation. Mm. So it's expectation. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's the outcome or your expectations as an adult that allows you to not want to make the mistakes. See, when you're a child, you're 10 years old, you don't have any expectation. Your expectation is to go play with the boys down the block or go fishing or climb the treehouse or not go to school, have the summer off, go outside. I don't know if kids do that now, but that's what we did, mm -hmm. right? It was to go have fun, right? There was no hard, fast, you know, like, Oh, I got to go to work because I got to pay my mortgage. Mm -hmm. So the difference between when you're a kid and when you're an adult is the pressure, the results, the expectations you are telling yourself. Yep. Which, by the way, I'm just setting all you guys up today because I'm going to drop the atom bomb on all this stuff in episode number 358. Oh. Mm hmm And what, today you're just a total setup? You're not going to give us anything? I'm just talking about, no, I'm going to give you some stuff, but I'm, I'm just talking about the scariest story in your head. And I'm going to yeah. tell you how you can shatter all this. Now watch this. I'm talking just about that. Our subconscious right. mind lies below our awareness, Right. That's what makes it subconscious. What does the word subconscious mean? Well, conscious is aware, keeping it simple, and sub means below, below, less than. Below your conscious. Yeah. Right? It is not a logical thinking thing. It just grabs data and feeds it back. This is no different than your computer. Mm -hmm. If you put in bad data... It spits out bad data. This is exactly what the subconscious mind is. It's like a, a computer that has bad data. It's just adding one plus one equals four because mm. that's the data that was put into it. It's not thinking, no way one plus one could equal four. It mm. doesn't do that. It doesn't think. It's data in, data out. <clears throat> I fell off my bicycle, broke my leg, and it hurt. Stay away from bicycles. <laughs> right. A right? equals A, then A equals that, A equals bike, pain equals F. But instead, <clears throat> it is what we use to protect ourselves from loss and pain. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Ever say, well, I just have this gut feeling I should blank. Mm -hmm. I just have a gut feeling, Peter, that we should go to this seminar. Mm -hmm. I just have a gut feeling I should do real estate. Yeah. That's your subconscious mind working below your awareness. Authoring your future with probably a past unpleasant experience. If you, like I said, if you fell off of a bicycle at age five and broke your leg, then at age 50, you have a business opportunity with bicycles, which could make you a lot of money. <clears throat> you won't remember you fell off the bike and broke your leg. But your subconscious mind will give you the story of, I can't do this deal. My gut is just telling me to stay away. Mm -hmm. It's not free thinking.
So your subconscious mind is trying to protect you from, from bicycles. Bicycles just bring you pain and loss. Below your awareness level. The story you're telling yourself. How you got hypnotized and don't even know it. You know, it, the way you're saying that, I'm thinking, maybe it's not even the story we're telling ourselves. Maybe it's the story we're being told. Well, you're in charge of yourself, so you either believe that story or you don't believe that story. So it's the story you're telling yourself. Yeah, with that data coming at you, if you buy it or not. But like you said, you could blow it up, not listen to it, put a better one in there and, and instead. I'm going to have a good day today, damn it. Okay, so what do we do about it? Mm. It. I don't know how I figured, well, I do know how I figured this out. <clears throat> but I figured it out. And yeah. it's an odd way to explain it, and I hope I do a good job. But I'm telling you, if you practice it, it will change your life. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I've been doing. First of all, everything I just told you about with the pictures, I blow them up. I melt them. I have a torch, and I melt them. And I, they're, they're like to me, they're like billboards on the side of a highway. Mm -hmm. and, and I look at them, and I have a torch, a big torch, and I melt them, and I watch them melt. Or I have like I told you this. What is it? Simity Sam. Yo, Yosemite guy. Sam. Yeah, that little guy, and he's got he's got guns and cannons and shit, and I blow them up. Yeah. Right. And it works. Mm -hmm. Stupid, but it works. But yeah. that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what you should do. So what I want to do is I want to look at two words mm -hmm. before I explain this to you. And this is going to be a little bit, uh, it's a little bit different. It's a stretch. So please hang in there with me. Mm -hmm. But I promise you it has a good punchline. By the way, this is, this is all related to creative real estate. I know I'm kind of off on a profound pond right now, but I promise you it's about creative real estate. This is why someone like me does more deals than someone like you. If you just think of what Bill said, creative real estate, just think of the creative part. It means create. How do you, I'm, you know, I'm also a musician, and you create out of thin air. How do you create? You, you got to be free thinking. You got to be yeah. free thinking. Yeah. Here are the two words. Mm -hmm. Content and context. Hmm. Okay. Content is the principal uh, substance. The matter or the specific idea by itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Context is what comes before and after the content or the principal substance or matter. Okay. A little sticky, right? So let me give you a clear example of what I mean. Yeah. Let's say the content is one sentence and the context is the paragraph. There's a good definition of context, the parts before whatever, like content, and the parts after that expound on it and give it more meaning. But the content would be like the main, what are we really talking about here? Right. But the stuff, like you see a movie, they set, oh, you read a book, they set it up. You know, there's this, the, where is it? There's the blue sky, there's, you know, this whole thing, the dark shadow, but then there's the actual stabbing or whatever it happens. But there's parts that lead up to it, the parts that go after, there's a main point. But the context gives you more data about it and more understanding. Does that help? It's exactly what I'm trying to communicate. You did it much better than I did. So context yeah. is before and after, and content is the actual topic or subject. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is too many people look at the content and not the context. And they dwell on the content, mm. which is the story in their head, 
which is usually a reactive type of uh, situation because of some painful thing that happened or some stress or some emotional thing that happened to them before. It's below their awareness, so they don't even know it. Mm-hmm. So, it's, well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. So, let me give you an example. Seller says they want all cash. Okay. That's the content. Yep, that's the main topic. This triggers your subconscious mind and shuts off your logical mind. And you don't think of the context the seller is saying this in. Mm-hmm. In other words, it triggers an unawareness because the re- and you said this a bunch of times for many podcasts. Well, we're 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 in creative real estate to make money. We don't have money, most of us, mm-hmm. right? I I've often talked about in the past, like <clears throat> investing, creative real estate investing implies that you have capital. And you're trying to get a rate of return on it and you want to park it in real estate. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is why we use the word real estate entrepreneur because the entrepreneur has resources and aligns those resources and sets the aims where everybody gets something. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. So that means the money guy gets money and the seller gets what they want and the buyer gets what they want and you and your family get what you want and the contractor gets what he wants. And the, you see, you're the orchestrator. You're like, uh, what? what is the guy up there? I was going to say, the, I swear to God, I was going to say, Bill, it's like a conductor for the orchestra. A conductor of the orchestra. Just, right? just as you were saying that. The con, yeah, the conductor can walk in with a stick. He doesn't have an instrument even, right? He's got a little stick. Uh and the, everybody else has the instruments, the money, the things. But if without the conductor with the stick, the music doesn't play. And that is a real estate entrepreneur, is that conductor yeah. with your stick. Yeah. But how do you do that if you're telling your story like, I don't have any money, right? Uh-huh. You ask some questions and you find out that the seller bought a new house. Yep. And used up some of their savings and wants to put it all back. And wants it in cash. Yep. See how the added information, the context, help the content to build the story you are telling yourself? Yeah. I could help this guy. Right? So you mm-hmm. want to put $50,000 back in the bank. Okay, how much money are you going to make it on the bank? 3%. I just, I just was when I was uh, when I was away. I just met someone, and uh, she's interesting because she sells jewelry parts mm-hmm. to make jewelry with online. She mm. went into this business by accident, based on her numbers, based on what she told me. One statement she told me. I kind of did the math backwards and realized she's exceeding a half a million dollars a year. Online, at home, with a garage full of supplies, and she ships every day. Hmm. Awesome. Interesting, right? Crazy the jobs people wind up having. She starts to tell me about how much money she has in private. Mm -hmm. And she tells me about how she's getting paid good interest at the bank now. Finally, the bank is paying good interest, and I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> what? 02 percent instead of point one? I'm, th- I'm thinking, did it what? go up to like three to five percent? Even that's not good. I'm thinking, oh my god, she no. has no idea. No, really. Do, do you know what it's paying? Because they don't. I, I don't. I don't. They don't even pay a percent. I don't even look anymore. She's There's got it there. in savings accounts. <laughs> what does that make you think, Bud? <laughs> I can see the wheels going in his head. <laughs> I didn't say anything. No, I don't need to. Later on, come back. We're going to circle around later on that one. Here's the punchline. Mm-hmm. Truth is, the label we put on information is worse than the information usually. We subconsciously label it as good or bad. Right. 
without any inspection or research or even testing it. We're constantly, constantly aligning the data coming in to the data we think we already know. Mm -hmm. You're aligning the information to what your story is in your head. You're aligning the incoming information based on what you think. I'll do a webinar and I'll try to sell you Creative REI Replay, which is $1,500 down, which is going up pretty soon, and $147 a month. And you could be telling the story in your head, this guy's just trying to sell me something. Mm -hmm. And not realize that I've helped hundreds of people so far do their first deal that couldn't do deals before. Yep. Have no idea. You block out all of the good stuff because you label it as bad. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, by the way, you have the money in the bank. You're just being a murderer. You're a cheap son of a bitch. You don't want to spend it. You think you need to have a savings. You need to save for a rainy day. That's the story you're telling in your head. I need to save for a rainy day. And guess what happens? It rains often. Mm -hmm. Because that's what the story in your head is. I'm saving for a rainy day. Rainy days must happen. Oh, man. It's a rainy day. I'm glad I saved for it. It makes you right. Mm -hmm. Actually, your secret weapon, the only thing that you have when you strip everything else away in life, the only thing that you have that is so powerful it could blow up planets Your attention. Your attention units. And you can control that. What do you put your attention on? What do you focus on? What are you in control of? Your attention. See, your boundaries, in other words... Write or author your story first. Which, by the way, is our next podcast. It's all about boundaries. Hmm. Because the boundaries you set for yourself, the yeses and the noes, the good and the bads, and the acceptance level you create for yourself is the story you're going to follow. Right. Sounds like there's a, a lot of ideas people have that they've made decisions. I, mean, I think one of the worst things a person can do is let their decisions sit there, because that's that's really what you're talking about in a way. People make decisions from the information, like, oh, I don't I don't travel at three o'clock. The traffic is too hard. Right. Well, Jesus, what if there's something really important to do? Oh, I don't I don't do that. I knew a guy. I don't drive. His, his dad didn't drive anymore. There was some accident. He doesn't drive anymore. What if the wife needs to go to the hospital? Oh, I don't drive anymore. Yeah. Wow. Like they're doing something from the past and making it try to fit the present. Don't fit. I will never, ever, 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 ever for the rest of my entire life forget you standing in my kitchen with my wife and telling her, Pamela, mm -hmm. you're high maintenance. Me? Yeah. I said the <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and her direct response without any lag is, no, I'm not, Peter. I just have a lot of restrictions. Oh. I took that out of a, a 10 minute conversation, but hmm. I walked by and that's what I heard. <laughs> and man, I got to tell you, after being with my wife for 20 something years, it completely settled my universe. You change your expectations, Bill? I know what her restrictions are. So I either deal with them or don't deal with them. And yeah. so what I tell her now is those are your restrictions. You deal with them. I'm not dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Right? 
For example, we have family coming in for this weekend, and she wants me to do some. She wants me to wash the outside of the house. <laughs> I'm like, Pamela, that's not happening. Well, why not? Because that's your expectation, not mine. It's my family. My mother does not. She, my mother's coming from Florida. She does not care if my house is washed or not. Yeah. My mother's coming here to get a hug. Yep. And go to a wedding and see her family. Mm-hmm. I got a really good answer when people come up with ideas. I learned this a long time ago. I said, that's a great idea. You should do it. Right. If it's your idea, you do it. You ever, it's hard to get people. I've tried. Hey, I have a good idea. Why don't we do this? People don't do my ideas. They're my ideas. Get your own damn ideas and do your well, own. I'll do mine and do yours. I'm I'll gonna help do you with this. yours. I'm going to do mine, this but. in a couple more podcasts. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And, and, I, and, I, and I wasn't going to say this out loud, but I'm, I'm going to say it now. Yeah. I'm going to do a podcast on game makers. Game? Makers. Game makers. There's rules on which part of the game you're playing. Mm-hmm. Who plays what role in the game? Hmm. Okay. You're going to love it. Okay. Let's get back to today's podcast. Focus your, whatever you're focused. Let, let's talk about attention. Yeah. And I use units just as a, like, a unit is one inch by one inch by one. It's a one inch cube, we'll just say. Yeah. yeah. And it has so much energy in it. Just just so you can understand that that's how your attention works. Like, well, we can all imagine the days when we're really uh, alive, bushy-tailed, and well-rested. You could do a lot. Your focus is good. And some days you wake up, you're dragging, you drank too much or whatever, you don't feel good. You can barely pay attention to just the two inches around your face right. to get to the bathroom or so. So it can vary. You can have more attention or less. So watch this. Attention is a funny thing. Mm-hmm. I don't have money for groceries. Okay. Your attention's on what? Um, well, you could say it's uh, the, the, the groceries or being hungry, but really... It's the I don't have money for. Right. So right. the attention is on I don't have groceries. Mm-hmm. Or like you said, no money. Mm-hmm. So what is your attention on? You don't have it. So what are you going to get more of? Not, well, that's what you're thinking. That's what you're going to get. I don't have. See it. Look at my fridge. See, I told you I don't have food. Why don't you listen to me? I don't <laughs> I insist I don't have food. <laughs> okay. So you need to be careful what you're focusing your attention on and what stories you're telling yourself. Because if you're focusing yeah. on, I have to make a deal because I got to pay my taxes. Yeah. That's the wrong viewpoint. It's the wrong story to tell yourself. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you go into any deal with neediness you must have this you need this or else you will blow that deal up every single time and i'm going to tell you right now that is what 90 something percent of all my rookies and all my listeners do is they go into the deal with neediness and they're not flexible with their thinking they go into it with contents not context Mm. because they're well, focused on that one thing and they don't put everything around it. And I'll tell you how I know this, Peter. Yeah. Because of you. Mm. You look at the whole bill deal. Uh, you look at the whole deal bill. Mm -hmm. Money now, money monthly, money later, focuses your attention on the whole deal. And it's yeah. not just about you because it's about your seller it's about your buyer, it's about your lender, and it's about you. That formula works for all of those components. I'd just like to add one thing to the list for the listeners, all the numbers. Right. So, oh, the interest too high, I'm not going to buy it. Well, look at the rest of the numbers. I don't want to spend much. Look at the cash flow. Look at what the equity, Look, just look at all the numbers. I don't want to carry two mortgages for two months. Yeah, but look at all the numbers. It might be worth it. Whatever it is, just get all the data, money now, money monthly, money later, all the numbers, do all the math. And here's what I learned from you. Don't make any decisions. 
until you've really chewed it all up and there's nothing left to put in there until you find like, oh, this will work. Just right. don't so you make get, any you, decisions. You get an IRS audit. Yeah. What happens? <laughs> they come and they sit at my kitchen table and they squeeze money. Oh, I'm sorry, what? What would you... <laughs> So seriously, yeah, actually, what happens? You get an IRS well, audit, what happens? I've had it. They've come, they look at all the numbers, and you tell them what you got to tell them. They say they don't care, and they say, pay me this much, and they leave. That's but they tell you how much to pay after they do what? After they uh, inspect your, your records. Yeah. That's how we're doing it with the houses. We're doing an audit of the person that has the house. We're auditing their life. We're auditing their feelings. We're auditing their numbers. We're auditing their expectations. We're auditing all of it. Yeah. So it's until not, you get all that information, because you could, the numbers may say, let's do a subject to deal, but they're like, no, I don't want, I don't want to do that. Then you may have to do a slot deal because you, they won't give you any equity. Yeah. And you don't know that. I mean, we're going to look at a house today and I'm going to give Bill just the littlest numbers, the littlest data that he needs just to start and not tell him anything else. So when he's there, he can look at it with fresh eyes so I don't tell them, I think we should do this, that, or the other, because it could be something different. So I have to leave it open. I'm relaxed. We're going to go look at it, take it or leave it. If I don't do it, I'll go find another one. I don't have to have this one. If it works good, yeah. If it doesn't, move on. But I can't tell Bill, Bill, we should do a, because we don't have all the data yet. And that's what I would do in the car on the way. I think we should. And you go, ah, 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 quiet. Let me just go in the house and talk to the guy. So... But when we get off the podcast, we're going to have a short conversation. What do you want to know? Here's what I have. Just basic stuff. And go from there. Leave it alone. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, it's expectation, yeah. which is also limitations. Right. That's good, Peter. See, it, has, it ends with T-I-O-N, so we're going to have anything with T-I-O-N, we're going to add in there. To, uh, expectations more con- put you in limitations. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, context. That's a little context to it. All right, <laughs> See, so I learn as we go. <laughs> let, let, let's just uh, let's wind down here because we're at, a, at the hour mark. Uh, yep. So, focus your attention on. This is what you need to do, and you. I promise you. Oh my God! I'm going to do a whole podcast on this at episode number three fifty eight. And it, and if you are remotely any little bit of seriousness about wanting to make money then these two put this podcast and the next one are not just about real estate they're about mindset obviously i'm not trying to be a philosopher but i'm telling you i've been soul searching myself because i'm getting ready to make a quantum leap and i need to figure that out you need to focus on your boundaries and mission and kick everything else out of your head And most of us don't know. I'm not talking about goals. I'm talking about boundaries. Hmm. The do's and the don'ts. And we have them and we don't clarify them to align our thoughts to them. So we let the stories in our head run rampant. In other words, the stories interfere with what you want and believe in. Dispersal means spreading things all over in a very wide area. Dispersal means spreading things all over in a very wide area. It means your thought, attention, and stories you listen to are scattered and scattered and nothing but disruption for your desired results occur. Lack of focus. Mm -hmm. For example, don't buy a house all over, don't buy houses all over your state. Specialize in your town or one section of your town. Soon you'll be, uh, you'll be really, uh, you'll be really knowledgeable about that area, the people that buy and sell them, and what you need to do, how you need to find them, because you are living it. You know it. <clears throat> I promise, if you look, 
You have lots of stories you are telling yourself that don't serve you best. And good old Bill style, find them and whack them. They're <laughs> suspects. <laughs> end a podcast please make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel so you're listening to us on or whatever device you're listening to us so you know when we're back here live again um, every Thursday morning 9.30 a.m. we uh, live stream on Facebook Twitter and YouTube so if you want to go check us out you can uh, post in those different apps any questions you might have about the podcast um, if you want to join our uh, list uh, or join our mastermind group uh, for free, you can go to uh, WhatsApp Messenger and type in Let's Talk Real Estate. If you can't find it, just go to Flipping Houses for Rookies, top right-hand side, send me a support ticket, and I will send you a link. And there you go. Don't forget to go check out the new tool, right? CreativeRealEstateAnswers.com or go in the link where uh, you, you're watching this, the description, and click on that link and you can go check it out. Okay? Next week, the name of the podcast, episode number 358. It's next week for us. It may not be for you. It might be might be next five minutes for you uh, once we record it. The name of the podcast is Why So Many Rookies Lose Deals Without Boundaries. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. I can't wait to do it. Okay, we're over and out. Thanks for thanks for all your support. Thanks for joining us. And uh, check us out on our next episode. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.